Howdy everyone, good to see you again, and today I'm reviewing the latest in a long line of record-breaking Sigma lenses, the brightest aperture 14mm lens ever made, the Sigma 14mm f1.8 Art. I personally love wide-angle lenses with bright apertures, so this is a very exciting day for me. This is a lens designed for full-frame or APS-C digital SLR cameras, and it can be adapted onto mirrorless cameras too, if you have the right adapter for your camera system. The cost of such a special lens is as much as one and a half thousand US dollars, or £1,300 in the UK, so you're really having to pay for the novelty here. Perhaps this is one to borrow from a lens hire company once in a while, which is exactly what I did in this case. And that reminds me, I'd like to take a moment to thank my supporters on Patreon, something I'm always forgetting to do, for supporting this channel. With your support, I can keep affording to hire interesting camera lenses like these for testing purposes, so I really appreciate your generosity. Take a look in the video description for more information about supporting this channel on Patreon. So, a full frame 14mm f1.8 lens, amazing. 14mm on a full frame camera is an extremely wide angle, so wide that it's not always easy to shoot with, and f1.8 is a super wide maximum aperture too, which lets in lots of light, making this lens an immediate, obvious choice for astrophotographers, wedding photographers who want dramatic images in dark venues, and anyone else who likes artistic, wide angle images. That bright f1.8 aperture means you can shoot comfortably in dark conditions, and also means that you can get a noticeable degree of background separation from your subject, something you won't normally see on an f2.8 or 2.4 lens. So, you can get some pretty curious portrait pictures here, and exciting close-up images. It's a useful focal length on cameras with smaller APS-C sensors too, where the equivalent full frame focal length will be about 22mm, another lovely, not so wide but still very wide angle. Let's look at the lens's build quality first. It is a big lens on any camera, beautifully and solidly built, like all of Sigma's art branded lenses, but with a frighteningly exposed front glass element. Do not accidentally scratch that beautiful glass, it's easily the part of the lens that's most expensive to have replaced. Necessarily expensive, and necessarily heavy, the whole lens weighs over 1.1 kilograms, or about 2.5 pounds, so it's really hefty in your camera bag. There's no way to use conventional filters with this lens, which is a shame, but also typical for such a wide angle optic. The whole lens is based on a metal lens mount with a weather sealing gasket around the edge to give you a little extra protection from dust and moisture ingress. Apart from the auto manual focus switch, the only control on the lens is the wide rubberized focus ring, which turns very smoothly and precisely, and can be adjusted whether or not you're in auto or manual focus mode. The copy of the lens I tested had some weird focus issues. It was poorly calibrated. If you wanted to focus to infinity, you actually had to focus at the 1 meter point on the scale. And on my Canon 6D camera, if I was shooting through the viewfinder, I needed a focus calibration of plus 12 in the settings. But once I'd done that, the lens focused consistently and accurately, so I was happy. The lens's autofocus motor is quick and very quiet. Like I said, once I'd calibrated it, it functioned nice and accurately for me. The lens comes with a built-in hood, which you can't remove, a nice Sigma lens bag, I really like those things, and a front lens cap that slips on nicely but securely. Overall, really the build quality is top notch. So image quality. Let's start on a full frame camera, my 20 megapixel Canon 6D. At f1.8, in the middle of the image, the lens is extremely sharp, with great contrast. The corners are also pretty fantastic, with an admirable lack of colour fringing, an impressive trait for such a wide angle lens. If you look into the very edges though, you can see some softness. 
You can see gradual improvements at f2.8, f4, and finally at f5.6, you see razor sharp picture quality across every part of the image frame. If you stop down the aperture further, then it's only at about f16 that you begin to see softness emerging due to the effects of diffraction. So it's a really excellent performance here on a 20 megapixel camera. Let's move on to a much tougher playing field now, my full frame 42 megapixel camera, a Sony a7R II. Things get a little complicated here. Straight from the maximum aperture of f1.8, picture quality in the middle of the image is sharper than Jordan Peterson. But all four corners are a complete disaster. After some testing, I figured out that, when mounted on my Sony camera using an adapter, there was huge field curvature. The corners came into focus much, much further away than the center of the image. So, if I focused further away, they became pretty sharp, except for, again, right in the edges. Frustrating and confusing. Why is this happening? My lens adapter has nothing but air inside it, and as far as I can tell, it's worked fine with everything else. I don't understand the physics of how field curvature would be introduced across all four corners of the image equally, using an adapter. It didn't happen when I tested out the Venus Optics Lauer 12mm f2.8 lens. Perhaps the 42 megapixel sensor is so much more demanding that the issue is only now being revealed. I somehow doubt it though. Well, anyway, the image quality in those corners gradually gets better as you stop down to about f5.6, although there's still field curvature to contend with. Stop down to f11 for pretty comprehensive sharpness across the whole image frame, from corners to the middle, without any field curvature. So on the a7R II, the results are pretty confusing, but potentially very good if you fiddle around with the focus enough. And finally, let's see how the lens performs on a camera with a smaller APS-C sensor. I've adapted it now to work on my little 24 megapixel Canon EOS M3. Image quality is fantastically sharp in the middle of the image, as expected, and also over in the corners. Nice. Stop the aperture down to f2.8 or f4 for marginal improvements. At f11, diffraction begins to kick in and the image gets a little softer. But overall, on an APS-C camera, the image quality is out of this world. Alright, let's see about distortion and vignetting on a full-frame camera. We see barrel distortion that's been squeezed into the edges of the image in a slightly uneven way. At f1.8, unsurprisingly, vignetting is very strong. The corners are pretty dark here. However, at f2.8, they brighten up lots, giving surprisingly even illumination. This gives the lens a big advantage over competitors with maximum apertures of only f2.8. How about close-up image quality? The lens can focus as closely as 25 centimeters. Not bad, but not terribly close. At f1.8, the close-up image quality is really sharp, although some purple fringing is pretty evident on contrasting edges. Stop down to f2.8 for perfect close-up image quality. How well does the lens perform against bright light? Fairly well. Contrast remains strong, although some gentle flaring is visible. Let's see now about coma levels. Sadly, while I was borrowing this lens, the shooting conditions for astrophotography were absolutely terrible. I just couldn't get a clear night, which was a huge disappointment. Here are some alternative test pictures for you, though. At f1.8, if you look carefully, you can see just a little smearing with bright points of light. It's reduced at f2.8. Honestly, I would say that if you're an astrophotographer, then the advantage of shooting at f1.8 will outweigh the annoyance of coma smearing. And if you really can't stand coma, then try out the Samyang XP 14mm f2.4 instead, which essentially has none. Gah, I wish I'd had a nice clear night for testing the Sigma lens though. Finally, bokeh. Not normally a very relevant question on a 14mm lens, but at f1.8, you can get background separation if you draw close to your subject. Your out of focus backgrounds will look quite smooth and undistracting, which is good to see on such a wide angle lens. 
Overall, the Sigma 14mm f1.8 lens is rather brilliant, if you ask me. Its build quality is great, it's very sharp with great contrast and neutral colours. Its wide aperture offers quite an advantage over other 14mm lenses, but it's an advantage you certainly have to pay for. This lens will be hugely appreciated by astrophotographers, although I also think wedding and event photographers could have great fun with it too. I'm not sure if I would pay £1,300 for it though, the price is a little out there. And I would naturally question adapting it onto a mirrorless camera from my personal experience. I have no idea what the issue was when I adapted the lens onto my Sony a7R II, I'd love to hear some other people's findings. It's worth remembering that, if you have a mirrorless Sony camera, then the very good Venus Optics 15mm f2 manual focus lens is also available, which is broadly equivalent to the Sigma lens, almost, and would be a far nicer and better value for money option, in my view. For digital SLR users though, who have a lot of money behind them, this enjoyable Sigma lens represents amazing picture quality and could be useful. So, if this is how you want to spend your money, it comes recommended.